Happy Friday, Pat, and welcome back to the country. Yeah, thank you, Rick. I feel like uh, uh, I think I ate enough and drank enough for the last 10, 11 days to uh, like I was going electric chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing with cruise ships. If you're really quiet, you can hear everybody's arteries closing. So yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, um, it was a uh, you know kind of an ill-timed trip with business. I'm just kind of you know, obviously we're in a grind grinding out period, but uh, booked it in May, so figure I'd go and you know it was uh, a little bit longer than I expected, but it was fun. Went to some different islands, so um, you know I'm not, the average age on the cruise was about 78 years old, 77. <laughs> Wow. So, okay. So if there was anybody on the cruise that was like my age, like 59, I could pick them out of a crowd pretty quick. Just, I just had to make sure I wasn't knocking anybody's, getting anybody in front of anybody's walker or, you know, tripping over their cane. Good God. What kind of cruise were you on? So, <laughs> but, uh, well, that sounds fun anyway. Um, and that means that, that the boat was probably pretty quiet at seven o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, had, I got to tell you this one story. Can I tell you this one story? Yeah, go ahead. yeah. It's a, it's a great cruise. It's called Crystal Cruise Lines, and I just had to laugh. So one night, I'll try to keep this short. One night after this uh, comedy comedy show, this comedian was on there, and then there's a couple right by the elevator. Guy with a beard. He's about they're probably about late mid to late seventies, and the lady was in a, one of those motorized carts. I go, oh, I, <clears throat> my buddy called me the mayor of the cruise ship because I was you know introducing myself to everybody. Everybody, hey Pat, how you doing? Hey Pat. I walked up to these people. I'm like, oh, that was a great comedian, was it? And, she, and he kind of looked at me and he goes, and I looked at the lady and she goes, I didn't think he was funny at all. Oh. So we saw the same, we saw the same couple get on the elevator the next day, me and my buddy, right? They, she gets in the motorized car in the elevator and I'm sitting, I'm like, okay, we're going to test this theory one more time with this couple. I said, uh, well, this is great. You're having a great, have a good time. She looked at me, she goes, I'm not having fun at all. <laughs> and then the guy, my buddy said, he goes, boy, the food is unbelievable. It's exceptional. He goes, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, man, oh. they, it was, I mean, it was comical. I mean, I like talk about a grungy old, uh, I just, oh, hope they weren't traveling with their kids. So <laughs> oh, it was hilarious. <laughs> well, sure. Well, not a whole lot went on while you were gone, uh, except for last week. Uh, rates took a big dive, and I wanted to kind of, you know, dive into that because, um, you know, I'm already mm -hmm. seeing, Pat, um, agents on social media going, here we go. Rates are coming down, and I'll tell you what, by March, you're going to see rates at 5%. The real estate market's going to be hot. It's going to take off. You better buy now. Marry the house, date the rate. And I'm like, stop it, guys. Stop it. It You don't yeah. know where rates are going to be in March. And so um, I'm already seeing this. This is from the uh, Fed's Susan Collins said more rate hikes can't be taken off the table. And I like what she said here. She goes, inflation reports this week showed a slowing pace in both consumer and producer prices. However, the recent data has been noisy. So I don't think that uh, it's it's a safe time to assume that we're absolutely uh, going to see lower rates. But we might be at the peak, but we don't know. But, you know, it was Paul Volcker that made the mistake, didn't he, where he thought things had really slowed down. So he kind of ramped it back up again and then inflation got out of control. I mean, he, he had to get back in and clamp down harder. Um, Chris here says, I'm thinking they're at the peak. I would imagine they will level off at 7% 30 year. That's the trick, Chris. Everybody's guessing. So if you got a real estate agent telling you we're going to be in fives by March, um, I don't think they have any reason to, any way to prove that. What are you seeing, Pat? Yeah, I mean, I mean, just in a nutshell, I'm going to try to keep this short and brief. I mean, uh, from what I'm hearing from Barry Habib, I know, Mike, I go a lot. I look at, you know, read that data. I listen to people. It does seem like we're at the peak. Remember, you know, last year or so, I've been saying everything kind of goes in waves, you know, six to 12 month waves. I mean, we've been in this, we've been in this 12 month, you know, 12 to 18 month wave, you know, of rates just being terrible. 
I mean, it just seems as though I'm just kind of going by psychology and just reading and hearing and you kind of put all this stuff together that every time they hit rates did hit five over five, they kind of leveled off. So I, I really believe in my heart of hearts that things, the cherry has come off the top of the ice cream, but we still have the ice cream of inflation that you have to, we have to eat through. <clears throat> and I think that's going to be um, a long time, you know, sometime down the road. But uh, I think just the way it feels, it feels like the, the fire is settling out a little bit. And, um, you know, rates are, I mean, if you look at rates, I mean, we're, you know, the high sevens, you know, over eight. And, um, <clears throat> and um, you know, we've, right now, rates have come down. I pulled up a scenario, which I'll pull up a little bit, you know, just a bit here. But um, it just seems like we're kind of getting toward the end game. It's just going to be all this, this, this type of period where we're just going to keep slogging along. Um, well, let me, let me share my theory and I guess I'll say concern here. So if, if, you know, inflation numbers looked good, except for shelter, shelter actually went up a little bit. And so I went and grabbed a couple charts cause I'm thinking, cause I got into a discussion about this with a friend this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. We're that fun. Um, and <laughs> I said, well, spending always takes a year to 18 months to make it way, its way into the economy. So if the government throws a bunch of money out there, you don't feel it for about a year, right? So I, I put the two charts together here this morning. And here's, here's Q, right between Q1 and Q3 in 2020. Look at all this spending we had. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, a year later, where were we? 2021. There's inflation. Okay, now, spending dipped down a little bit. Spending went back up here in 2021. And what happened in 2022? Still had inflation, 6.5%. Now, it came down here. And a year later, we're sitting here at 3.2. That's tremendous progress. This bothers me. Mm -hmm. Okay. It went up. So just that simple looking at how much money got injected in the system tells me, I don't think we're going to stay at 3.2 much longer. And we might, this people saying that rates will be down to 5% in March, better pay some attention to this because yeah. this could get in, this could get in the way. And, uh, and you know that the Fed, you know, the, the Fed chairman, pal, he has said that, uh, and other people in uh, the Federal Reserve have said, they got to quit spending like a drunken sailor. And uh, yeah. so, you know, that's that's out there. Now, looking at our local market, and then I want to dip into so many things, and I want to look at your charts here. But we, Crawford Report says supply usually weakens each year once we get to Thanksgiving. If demand can hold its current trend, then we are optimistic that the weakening market can stabilize by the end of the year. But all bets are off if interest rates move higher again. This is where we're at. So this is a seven-day moving average. New listings are declining, as I expected, the closer we get to Thanksgiving. That number is not going to go up till no. January. Uh, but the sales number is still staying right where we're at. So um, we've got the gap is closed. We're at 69% instead of 62%. So, But that's still enough to add. As you can see by the ticker below, we have 16,148 homes. I still think we'll see close to 20,000 homes on the market by February. But uh, um, that's based on adding 400 a week. But new listings, the uh, average price per square foot active listings are staying flat. They're not raising the price, although real estate prices have gone up in the sales prices, but so have contributions. Closing cost contributions are almost at 10 grand right now. And we have um, some stats here, too, talking about uh, all cash transactions jumped up but I, as a percentage. But I think that's because regular finance transactions dropped, not because we have more. Mm hmm cash buyers <clears throat> yeah and and what are you seeing as far as rates and fees right now um well here let's just uh let's go to the rate the rate chart first here i mean um you know like today <clears throat> we saw saw a muted day the six and a half percent coupon was up four basis points you know the u.s treasury 10-year treasury is at 4.43 right around there 
you know, that one Federal Reserve uh, chairman, you know, I think she kind of hit the nail on the head that we're going to see a lot of noisy data, you know, it just a back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I mean, that kind of you kind of see that it's kind of like a choppy market. You see that at the top and then you see those choppy markets at a bottom where things are trying to find a bottom. And, um, you know, I believe, you know, she did nail it as far as being noisy. <clears throat> you know, low, we've seen the rates, the lowest level that, that we've seen in the last two two months. So we have seen a nice downdraft. I mean, this is, we saw this, this is right now, this is October 18th, so 19th. So obviously, let's see, last month we've seen a good down, you know, downtrend in rates. That We've seen this ceiling, which is good. I mean, I take it all two years. It just seems like we are topping out. If rates do go up, I think they might go up a little bit higher, possibly. But it just seems like we're kind of toward the end of the, the end game, and we're just going to slog along here. And I think rates could float down right now. I just pulled up a rate chart here on my loan sifter, four hundred thousand dollar purchase, five percent down um, through Next Bank here. You know, rates. <clears throat> I don't know if you can. Are you going to be able to blow this up, or do I have to blow this up? You have to blow it up. Okay. I mean, uh, we go. got, you know, a month ago we were looking at, um, you know, eight high high sevens. Right now you can get a a uh, a rebate of about twenty five hundred dollars. That was that would have been like par or cost back about a month ago. So I mean, right now with five percent down, you can get into the, um, you know, seven three eights for a cost of seven hundred sixty eight bucks. Seven and a quarter for twenty one hundred dollars. So they've dropped off precipitously, um, you know, in the last month, which is good. But I think you might see them float into the low sevens, you know. But it's going to take some time. And um, I, you know, we're going to probably be trending sideways here. But that's kind of where we're at. I mean, it's nice to see the fact that we're not quoting, you know, seven point eight seven five, you know, or eight. Um, I think a lot of some of the retail banks were probably eight and eight and eight. Um, so you saw a nice dip. So, I mean, you look at it here, 7.875 is principal and interest of 27.55. And let's say you get it down um, to seven and eighth. I mean, you're looking at a uh, almost a $200 a month difference in payment. Well, it that's that was enough to make mortgage applications go up last week and it'll be interesting to see what it actually does with volume but i don't uh i don't expect that to open up the floodgates and no and i don't think i don't think it's gonna open up the floodgates i think it's gonna just uh, cause people to you know at least you know not be as cons you know they're because people are getting used to these uh sevens right now wouldn't you agree well, yeah, I think so. And then, but, you know, but there's some people that even though they're getting used to sevens, they still can't afford the home. So oh, yeah, yeah, uh, that's, yeah. you know, that, that's not something that goes away, goes away quickly. And I don't know where we're going to be in a year from now. Here's a, I wish I could make this show up better here, but, uh, well, that didn't work. Uh, there was a comment there. It's going to make me log back in. So I'm not going to do that. There was a comment that said, talking about, um, rental prices that, um, rental prices went down. 1.4% in our market, but um, they expect it to go down a little bit further uh, because of all the new building that's going on. But then it looks like the building's going to kind of stop. And uh, if that's the case, then there went the rental declines. Rent the prices start going back up. Real estate prices start going back up. It puts the central bank in a bit of a pickle again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can't pack. That's what they mean by noisy data. And yeah. This is J.P. Morgan said, putting a snapshot out of the U.S. history, how healthy it is and what could ca cause prices to fall. And they say existing home sales have cam come down a lot, but activity has not come down because the market is struggling or a bubble is bursting. It's come down because people are staying put. That's why there's no sales. Yeah. So then they say, what scenarios would drive homing prices down? The scenario, rising mortgage rates will affect demand dragging house prices down. And this JP Morgan, they're saying the likelihood is low. You go to housing supply, housing supply will increase and prices will drop. Their likelihood, very low. Affordable housing, 
A lack of affordable housing will lead to a correction. Likelihood, low. There will be some friction caused by lack of affordability, said John Sim, head of securitized products research at J.P. Morgan. However, supply is still very tight. If mortgage rates remain high, we may see some of the gains get chipped away, but still means prices will end up flat overall for 2023 instead of moving lower. So J.P. Morgan's not expecting any relief in prices. Um, and we did see relief in prices from last year to this year that got kind of erased the final quarter. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's, uh, it, I think it just demonstrates how slow things move. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the difference between, he's saying pretty much, I think what I've been saying, but the difference between him and I is he probably makes about 10 million a year. So, and put it in nice eloquent terms. <laughs> yeah yeah so he you know when he types people listen um yeah, yeah. So we got the we just have millions and millions of viewers that's yeah we just yeah, we, he doesn't yeah i know i bet you he doesn't have millions of viewers but uh no i mean i think overall it just seems like this once again we've been in a slogging market this last year and uh, i don't see any any real change i mean i think people are out there that look at a buy are wait you know i'm sure you know you and i have talked about this where we kind of feel that they're like people are waiting for some big big event. I just don't see it happening. I think we're just going to be in this. It's going to be one of these, it's going to be like a 30 year marriage. And it just kind of moves along. You know, people are just, <laughs> they're married, you know, they're just going to hang. Well, there's, just, they make it, try to make it happen. There's no economic data coming out in the next uh, 14 days that are going to alter it. It's, it's no. pretty slow because you got Thanksgiving week after Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, you're going to, you're going to see some, uh, the first week of December is when you get probably the most data, but this next week and a half, I mean, with, there's going to be some volatility because the way you see volatility is there's the traders, there's nobody. If there's something happening, you'll see me, you might see a swing because, but it's just that there's nobody there at the trading desk. Yeah. So the, the first week is when data comes out. Um, you know, obviously you got the um, feds next month and um, but you know, things just seem like they are tapering off. CPI numbers are coming down. They're not as crazy as they were, you know, eight, nine, 10 months ago, the cap, the capacity utilization rate, for factories is down, meaning that they don't have pricing pressure. Uh, you know, they're not using their machinery up to, you know, you, you know, the capacity. So you always have pricing pressure, you know, deflationary pressure there. But um, it just seems like as though that things are just kind of muddled along here. And, you know, to give advice to people, if they're, you know, people are looking for something, just, uh, just do what you need to do. You know? Yeah. You I saw a post, I saw a post the other day, I was on Facebook and the agent was saying that, you know, we're going to see rates get down um, um, probably below six by March and you need to buy now. And, uh, um, and I just, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm glad you feel that way. I really am, you know, knock yourself out, but I just saying to folks, just, just watch your numbers and don't purchase because an agent is telling you rates are coming down. Yeah. It, it's just look at the data, follow the numbers, look at the inflation data, watch what the, central bank is doing watch what traders are doing and make a grounded decision based on the numbers you're seeing now one decision that you can make if you're selling a house right now you know that the friday after thanksgiving is the best day of the year for to host an open house is there are people here visiting from minnesota michigan wisconsin and you know after thanksgiving not everybody goes to the mall. Sometimes they go out with their family from out of town and go, well, let's look at open houses in the neighborhood. And it's the highest traffic day for open houses. And so for agents and for sellers, uh, that's, you know, dust off your open house signs because that's that's a good one. Um, and I think uh, there's no reason. Open house traffic has been pretty good lately. Yeah. Uh, people are looking and few, waiting for something. So I bet there's a few families, though, that don't want to see Aunt Bertha move down here. They want her to get out of town as quick as possible. Yeah, yeah, they don't. Uh, you, that, you just take Aunt Bertha to the mall then. Um, <laughs> so, you know, so here's our rent growth. Um, shows here Phoenix rent growth over the last 12 months. I'll see if I can blow this up a hair here. Um, the U.S. is down 1.2%. Arizona down 3.8%. And Phoenix down 4.7. So that's uh, that's encouraging. Um, this is from Tom Ruff. I think that, uh, but again, you know, you look at rent prices and they go, wow, it's down. And then you look at the actual math and it's, it's down $12. Um, so, you know, it's going to be a while if rent prices get 
reasonable criticism. Thinking the same, you'll see demand come back somewhat early in the year. You know, Jackie here, I, Jack, you got a dollar? Uh, she's not saying rates are going to get below 6.5, but she's right. If it does, gets below that, then watch out. But I'll tell you what, Jackie, if they do, central bank's going to come back in and put an end to that party. Well, I think the future, you have to look at, not with the Fed, I mean, once again, with the Federal, every time the Federal Reserve does something, it's always baked into the market about three to four months ahead of time. You uh -huh. just have to watch them. You got to see how the markets are trading day to day, week by week. And they'll kind of tell you what what's going on, you know, three to four or five months down the road. I mean, yeah, they're talking about it. I can see my take on things are is that, you know, we saw that the short term peak in rates. They're going to probably mull around here in the mid to high sevens. And I think that, you know, do they, you know, the scenario I see is happening to float down the low sevens, kind of hang around there for. I mean, we're going to see hopefully we see this kind of gradual versus this drop. You know, this because that that's creates volatility. Yeah, there's no reason for them to get in there and get carried away. Here's our the supply and demand. <laughs> Jackie says, okay, 6.75, but not lower. <laughs> yeah. Here we are at supply and demand. When these lines cross, prices come down and they still have a ways to go. So we're not seeing um, that happen yet. They haven't even kissed yet. So, like they did last year. So, this is when prices came tumbling down. And the eye buyers were dumping like crazy. Well, it's a busy chart when I roll it over there. <laughs> but uh, so we're not, we're not there. I keep looking at it, uh, not quite every day, but close. So we'll figure out what's going on. I think looking forward, we have no, like you say, big reports coming. It's going to be light trading days. That uh, I think the Mortgage News Daily had a head sign headline that says, "Okay, see you at Christmas." Yeah, um, you know. yeah. <laughs> they basically said that it's like, okay, they're gonna take the next week and have two weeks off, you know. So, yeah, that's pretty much. I don't know that's pretty much what we're gonna see. I think it's just gonna muddle along here, and I mean, obviously, there is talk. Right, you know, I've seen some talk about how um, the Feds. You have probably seen this where they're saying they're gonna probably see three or four rate cuts tomorrow you know, next year, middle to end of next year. Who knows? Yeah, and they say. They say probably, and I think that's um, the most likely scenario unless, like that first chart I showed you that showed our spending, surprises everybody with an uptick in inflation. We're at 3.2. You know, you see any indication that that's starting to turn around and they see, you know, in the weeds, they see those numbers, uh, they they might surprise us Yeah, with a 25 basis point uh, raise. And so that would really throw the markets off. Yeah. So, I mean, it could happen very quickly. We could come in in December and everything will be just fine. We're now we're at 3.1. Everybody, oh, man, this is great. Yeah. Rates are coming down. And then all of a sudden in January, a number comes out. So um, then, you know, then here goes, there goes Santa Claus, right? I mean, it's just like if, if, if that 3.2 turns into 3.1, and the next thing you know, it's 3.4, the market's going to go nuts. And yeah. they're just going to throw the baby out with the bathwater and rates will go back up. So those I, that, that's what you should be watching for, I think. I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think, you know, the, my general my general feeling is this is just me talking, just reading and seeing and talking to people is that I, and listening to, you know, the, the financial news. I just don't see the, the feds are not going to be the first blip that's going to go on down. They're, they're going to hold pat for a while because they do not want to look like fools again. And you're going to have to see sustained period of time that, okay, we're getting inflation, but I, inflation is there. It's still, it's going to be, it's, it's like a wart. It ain't going to go away for a while, but um, you know, we, there's also talk about these commercial buildings. I, you know, obviously I was watching this one financial news network. I think it was Fox business news, whatever. And they were talking about how you know commercial buildings, there's talk about the commercial building area, those loans coming, what kind of havoc that's going to cause on the local banks. You know, obviously smaller regional banks have commercial bank, you know, exposure, but you know, th that's going to be something to watch, but it's kind of interesting. You know, they, uh, you know, you've got to think about it. Commercial banks, they're non-recourse loans where, you know, a big institution can just give the keys away and boom, we're done. Whereas a yeah. home loan, a home loan is a recourse loan. You're responsible for that payment basically. So I think all the talk about the commercial, res it's going to probably spill into the residential a bit. I mean, but residential is still, there's still going to be that underlying demand. I think banks know that, you know, they're not that stupid that, uh, you know, it is a, kind of a separate market, even though it's affected by each other, you know, from a lending standpoint. But 
once again, commercial banks are not in recourse. And, you know, you get a $250 million loan and say, all right. And most institutions are, they're just going to write that off. You know, just yeah, walk yeah, away. Yeah. So, and some, know, it's going to be reset. If that that number is going to be reset. Somebody is going to come in and buy a $250 million building for $60 million, $70 million and be back at it again. Well, it's not something that's going to roll into a single family housing either. No, I don't. I don't see. I mean, it's going to it'll probably have an effect, you know, to a certain degree. But I, you know, I, I don't think it's going to have as much of an effect as I don't know. That's just my feeling. I was we, we had a comment here on the Crawford Market Index. And that's why my eyes are darting over here. I'm looking for the you know, I want the one chart that I can I can show because the Crawford Market Index has been a very reliable economic um, predictor of of activity and prices. And this is it here, Pat. And uh, you can see that, you know, we have been going down, um, but it's been going down actually percentage wise quite remarkable. Um, so we're at 113 and we kind of peaked out at here at 161. So, but you can see what happened last year as it started to go down in February and then March and went down here. And then out here is when we saw the price cuts. Um, so it isn't a big drastic drop right now. So I'm not expecting any price cuts anytime soon. Jackie said holidays as they are, are always great for buyers. I'm not saying that to push anyone. If you can afford and you're ready, there might be some good deals in December. Yeah, the holidays are good for buyers in that there's fewer buyers. Yeah, That doesn't mean it's bad for sellers because the only buyers that are out there are the ones that are looking because they really want to move or they have to move. So the sellers are the same way. Yeah, yeah. They're like, I got... I, I've the last 23 years, I've always, I've been a big proponent of people like people that have been looking last, yeah, last several, several years. I've been telling, I go, the best time to buy is November, December, because it's pretty, it's pretty simple theory that people really are not looking to buy or sell. I mean, you, if you have a, you might have a seller that's really desperate. You might have a buyer. They might get, obviously with this market being slower as we have, and we're getting seller concessions, you might see a more of a pronounced, um, you know, uh, deal if that makes sense on a house yeah, because, yeah yeah you know i think it's gonna be november and december like you said usually has been the best time i agree with jackie 100 because it's like you can get you can kind of snap somebody a deal away from somebody when they're the other people are not looking but this might this period might be even a little bit more pr pronounced than that than that than the last couple of years because of this market that we've had the last you know 12 to 18 months well and then there was the arguing about elections. And then the comment was made that, you know, this administration knows that they can't win if inflation is still raging. So they're going to have to stop inflation. And so my answer to that again is this chart. Well, it takes a year and a year and a half for that spending to wake, make its way into the market and they already spent it. So it's too late. So if they really wanted to keep inflation down because there's going to be an election, they should have stayed down here. Yep in spending, but they didn't, they went up, 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 up and up. So that, you know, the, the cake is in the oven already. And so this will result in higher inflation down the road in my humble opinion. So I also strongly disagree with any implications and where people say that, um, the central bank is influenced by, um, um, elections. And yeah. that, uh, so, you know, so I think, uh, it, I haven't seen it. And, and they go and the central banks, um, you know, I can roll back and go, well, you know what? They didn't help Jimmy Carter. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we don't know who they want in the office and who they don't want in the office. And, uh, so Miguel here saying, so after I sent the Crawford market index numbers, um, I'm the Crawford market index, Miguel is showing me that, uh, that's just going to continue to be no no hard downward pressure on uh, on the uh, on pricing, and so then he he asked, "How is the inventory shortage being addressed?" Well, it's it's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's no, not. Builders are now cautious, and they're backing up. In three years, it looks like it's going to be even worse. So that, there's your yeah. short answer there. It's not. How how do you address it? Just, you know, well, number one, you, you probably, you know, you loosen up regulations in terms of zoning, probably. Uh, you know, the, gov the government could have a direct impact on that by 
loosening up. You know, it takes how long does it take to get a housing permit and all this crap that's, you know, uh, destined to build a home? You know, well, not only home. the length, but how much money it costs. And then how for individual money? investors that are out there um, that don't want to sell their homes because of capital gains. Well, why not give them a break? Yeah. Yeah. You know, say, hey, look, sell your inventory this year and uh, um, no capital gains ca tax. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's no, certain things. Dump those homes like tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, bottom line is, like, I've been saying this until I'm blue in the face. I've been saying this for the last couple of years. It's a, it's, it ain't hard to figure out. It's a pure supply demand equation. We've been, you look at that chart that we showed a couple, you know, last, over the last year, showing how building was averaging one and a half, one and point four, one and a half million homes a year. And then they dropped drastically to four, what, 500,000 in year 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14. And we yeah. had this, finally, this climb. And, it's it's not hard. To, I mean, that is built into the system now and it's not going away. It, the things that we're talking about are just not people are waiting for this this uh, golden uh, ticket to be able to buy a home. And things are just baked in the system that these are system wide uh, issues that are not just going to happen next week. And, you know, you know, I saw this one meme on Facebook saying there was one real estate agent said, you know, back. I can't remember the years or whatever they said. If you waited for rates to go down in 2000, uh, 1971, or I'm, I'm throwing numbers out, you were waiting. Yeah, it's not the same thing. Yeah, you, know, you, you would have to wait 20 years for it to, you know, to to buy a home. And so that kind of goes back to my theory. I mean, in your theory, like if you got agents, uh, you know, we got good. You're a great agent, Jackie's a great. You know, they're not. They're, there's agents that are obviously clamoring for business, and they're trying to obviously maybe get pushy. But you know, guys like you that are professionals don't. You know, they. You look at what people are looking, what they need to do, what they want to do versus, you know, you know, you're you're looking for the client. You're look, you really do. You guys look out for the client. But there's a lot of stuff out there that um, just says that everything is built into the system that we're. this is not going away for a while. And we're in a supply demand. You know, it's unfortunate, but it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and, and Miguel, that's a great question. I mean, yeah, everybody's asking that in the country. What are they going to do? There was. Um, Seattle came out with a law, the city council, which I don't know what planet those guys are from. They just <laughs> spent, they're going to spend all this money to add um, low income housing. And, but there, there's something about it. I'd have to look it up. I'm kind of speaking out the cuff here, but when you really look at the details, it's going to make the situation so much worse because really? they're going to be pulling them in off the off the market uh, rent they're gonna they're putting in like rent controls so now the investors are gonna say I'm out you know and it's just the city council just you know they they step stepped in it again big time so I think uh, you know we're from the government we're here to help doesn't always doesn't always work but they're it's it's like anything when you look at it it's very frustrating being a constituent sometimes and you say well if you would just do this yeah it's like for Social Security, right? Social Security is in really tough shape. We'll take the cap off, the 100% cap. You know, right now you you pay 7% Social Security tax until you reach an income of 100000 and it goes away. We'll get rid of the cap. Just say there is no cap. And raise the retirement age from 67 to 69. Boom. You've solved the problem, but nobody will touch it. Housing is yeah. the same way. Give some tax incentives for investors to move some of their inventory or put them on the market and shorten the amount of time and money that it takes in the permit process for builders, you've solved the problem. Yep. So, um, so it's, uh, um, and the average American, you know, is actually not doing too bad. The first time home buyer Miguel is the one that's, that's, that's feeling it. Um, I think, I think I was saying about this too, uh, just to jump in quick. I mean, the overall average person looking to buy a home, they, you know, with rates coming down like they did recently, it shows you that obviously the payment can change by two hundred dollars. If they if they get down even further, you can you can change your payment pretty quickly. If rates did drop, they could drop it by five or six hundred dollars. You get inflation out of the system. You know, inflation is costing people seven to nine hundred dollars a month. Those two things combined, I think the bottom line is the average person is just feeling pinched. Mm -hmm. If there's no, there's no, they don't feel there's just this pinched feeling. And, yeah, three you percent know. sounds good, but not when you add it to the six percent that was already there and the seven percent that was already there. Um, but uh, you know, so um, it's um, it's it's hard. It's hard to go to the grocery store. 
and they can do nothing about it. Fortunately, I'm a homeowner and well off, thank God. But it sucks to see so many people struggling simply to afford a home. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's fun. I, I've got three boys. I wish I could get them all into a home, but it's uh, it's tough. So, well, Pat, you have a fantastic weekend. I'm sure that you're probably just going to want to do nothing after uh, cruising around on a boat. And uh, that's uh, yeah. kind of how I'm feeling. I had my buddy come up from Texas and we went out camping for a few days and uh, camping supposed to be just sitting down and relaxing, but we went on a charter fishing trip that just, I, I don't like the fish. <laughs> and to me, it was like four hours of watching paint dry. I just, I never seem to catch fish when I go. And this was no different after about, you know, it's just now we're going to jig. So you're jigging, right? Just bouncing the lure out. And I thought, what could be more boring than this? <laughs> I'm standing in the boat, you know, like, <laughs> I mean, I've seen Canyon Lake for a beautiful view. I'm looking around, trying to enjoy it. But I go, this is not fun. And, yeah. you know, especially if they're not biting. And uh, yeah. after an hour of that, I was like, shoot me now. <laughs> so, That's funny. Thanks, Miguel. Cool. I, I, I will tell you one thing. As an Irishman that drank for like 11 days straight on this damn cruise, uh, I hate to say it, but I'm a, I'm not going to touch touch alcohol for a while. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think uh, uh, John and I, our livers were crying for help, so we're yeah. we're, uh, we're we're off the we're off the on the wagon for a while. So, yeah. well, Pat, have a great one, and uh, we will talk to you next yep. week, maybe. All right, see you. Good. Take care.